many of you have had to restructure or be a part of a restructure for your company? I know that the majority of you have either been a part of it or you've been, you've experienced it. You're listening to The Human Resource. My name's Pandy. And, you know, it never fails. Um, every year I have at least one client who will come to me and say, I, this is just too scary for me. I just don't know that I can do this. But at the same time, my company, we have no choice. We really have to eliminate some positions. We're just not profitable in a certain area or they're just not as effective as we thought they would be. Or, you know, we just aren't, we just aren't making it. We really have to make a, a shift and a change. And so I, I thought we ought to talk today about, you know, how do we go about that? Because there's so much emotion around difficult conversations. And we've talked about this on the show a number of times. You know, as much as we want to eliminate emotion from what we do in our jobs, it always creeps back in. And when you're having a conversation where the results may be that someone loses their job, it, it's not going to be easy. But maybe I can give you some hints today on how we can walk towards a restructure and, and a conversation about restructuring that might be a little bit easier and help you wrap your arms around it uh, to make it a little bit more comfortable. I had a um, business owner look at me yesterday and say, yeah, we're just gonna have to, we're just gonna have to eliminate that position. I mean, that, that department. And it's not a lot of people, but he said, daggone it, I just, I've been dragging my feet to do this for a couple of years and we just can't, we just can't substantiate it anymore. I said, okay. All right, so what are your thoughts? And he said, I just, I, yeah, I'm just stuck. I said, okay. My challenge for him was to re-clarify the why. Why are we doing this? And not that I'm challenging him as to whether he's right or wrong. But if you've got someone looking at you and saying, look, I need to make a major change in, in, in my department or my division, Understanding the why and having them verbalize that and, and t speak to it will not only help you better understand, but it will also make sure that that individual has thought it through. We don't want to start talking about eliminating positions and firing people. If there are other alternatives, maybe we just need to be more efficient in the department. Maybe we just need to change a schedule or we need to move people around. But to eliminate a complete department or to completely restructure that may result in losing jobs, you need to have a why. You need to have a, a really good clarification. And then once you understand that, take it further. What will be the impact? Well, if we don't have this department anymore, who's going to pick up those, those jobs, those responsibilities. Is there a way that we can move some of the individuals that are in the department that's being eliminated over to where those jobs are going to move? Do the individuals that are doing the job currently, do they have the skill sets to take on other roles so that they can keep employment with the company if we have the openings? What will the impact be on the individuals, other employees, and the company? And then, what would their role be? Do we have enough expectations or do we have enough vision to understand if we interview these individuals for other positions? Are we willing and able to automatically extend offers to them? Do we know enough about the individuals that we have currently and what they might be doing 
to have those conversations. What would their new salary be? What would their new hours be? Who would they be reporting to? Again, think about the impact of not only what would happen with the company, but what's going to happen to these individuals and the other departments that will have to be, you know, will be affected as well. And then you have every right to talk to that team lead or that supervisor about what are the consequences. Again, if you don't clearly clarify what the elimination of this department is going to do to the company or what it's going to offer these individuals in other positions, what would be the consequences? Is there a chance that someone could say that we discriminated against them because we didn't offer them a job somewhere else in the company? Could one of these employees look at us and say that we're retaliating against them because they just had a workers' comp claim or because um, they you know, complained about a safety issue? What are the consequences if we don't think this through and clearly understand all the aspects of this? I also like... To, to remind clients, do you truly understand the people that you have? Have you truly identified and documented all their skill sets? Because if you're eliminating individuals in a certain area of your customer service area, but the only positions you have open are over here in the warehouse, what's the chances that those individuals in customer service can drive a forklift? Or what's the chances that somebody in customer service can actually, you know, drive a truck or um, do some of the, the things in the, the area of logistics or, or warehousing? They may not. not. I mean, let's just aside from whether they have an interest in it or not, they may not have the skill sets. And if that's the case, not that you don't want to offer them the opportunity because you don't want to assume that they don't have the opportunity or the, the skill sets. But at the same time, you have to be prepared because emotionally they're going to look at you and go, are you kidding me? You want me to leave customer service and go work in that dirty old warehouse? You see, what I'm trying to say is mentally you need to completely prepare yourself for the consequences of how this conversation is going to go. No, we're, we're not going to make everybody happy in this. Anytime you restructure, people are going to stand back and go, oh, okay, you're just trying to get rid of us because we're the oldest ones in the, in the building, we're the oldest ones in the company, and we're getting paid the most, so you're just going to eliminate our, our positions. And God, God help you if that's what you're doing because you're going to need them. You're going to need to pray really hard if you're eliminating a department that has the oldest individuals in your company who are making the most amount of money and you can't substantiate it. You can't explain it. You can't clarify the needs of the business. And very truthfully, what I'm trying to do is help you understand that if you don't know the needs of your business and can't speak to that, you can't speak to why you're doing something, then you shouldn't be doing it. And you need to slow down. Now, I have seen this so many times with larger companies who just get tired and say, you know what, I just don't want to deal with all the problems in that department anymore. We're going to, we're going to restructure or better yet, um, I'm just tired of that employee. They're the only one in the department I only have the one individual. They've been here forever, and I'm, they're just a pain in my side. I'm going to restructure, and we're going to take those responsibilities, and we're just going to move them over to another individual, and we're going to change the title. Well, <laughs> as many times as I have seen that done. Good example. Uh, yeah, I've got a controller, and I just... I'm just sick and tired of dealing with their, their complaining and I'm just, you know, uh, they've been here too long. I'm done. So I'm going to eliminate the controller position and I'm going to bring in a, an accounting manager. 
my best advice to you <laughs> is go to your labor law attorney today, not tomorrow, today. Because if you're taking the exact same duties and the exact same responsibilities and moving them over to an accounting manager versus the controller, you haven't changed anything. You haven't restructured. You just blatantly changed a title. Oh, and, and, and probably to your benefit, you probably changed the salary range, the, the, the salary that you're paying for as well. But my, my point is restructuring is, is just that. It's, it's a complete change. It's a complete overhaul. And if you have a situation where you've got somebody who's just really grumpy and or just not a good fit because they're just it's just not clicking. You're just you just want to eliminate them. You want to eliminate their position. Let me tell you something. If you're going to change the title and try to get away with that, then you can change the pay range and tell them that you are restructuring that role. And this is all you have to offer. I know. I I know one company even changed the schedule and said, "You know what? I don't. I don't need a first shift. I'm going to make it second shift because they could. It, it fit. But the individual who was working first shift at this original title and the original salary range said, i 'I'm I'm not interested in that role. If that's what this is becoming and that's what you're creating, I don't want it. So." Unless you've got something else that my skill sets fit, I guess you just fired me. And that's pretty much what happened. There are right ways to do it and there are wrong ways to do it. But my point is, it's never going to be easy. It's never going to be easy to restructure. But if you think it through, it can be a little bit easier. Look, in business, people don't go into business to make everybody happy because at some point, somebody's somebody's going to go sideways. Somebody's not going to be happy. And business is business. So stay focused. If you need to restructure, stay focused on truly what are the needs of your business? Who do you have there doing and meeting those needs? And do what's best for everybody. But always, always, always communicate the truth. Always. I hope that helped. My name is Pandy. Thanks for listening to the Human Resource.